Hello all you futuristic implant imbued cosmonauts, as always I am Cosmic and today we're going to be reviewing Torment Tides of Numenera, the latest RPG from Inaxel Entertainment and of course the game that is the spiritual successor to Planescape Torment. The game is set in the world of Numenera billions of years into the future, which means that many civilizations have risen to power and then fallen to dust which has left the surface of Numenera full of ancient and powerful technology that people in the modern day don't understand how to use. So it, they are regarded with a sense of mysticism and technology is treated basically as magic. So you have everything from lasers to nanotechnology to just things that are just completely out of this world. There's time travel, there's cloning, there's being able to build your own body. All that kind of thing is possible within the world as long as people test and understand how to use this technology, which by itself is very difficult. The story around Torment, Ties of Numenera, centers around you, a cast-off. And a cast-off is someone who has been created by the Changing God, who is a man that has achieved immortality through using technology, and he essentially leaves a body and then just takes over another body that he's created so he can create his own body and each time he creates a new body it will be faster or better in some way and his consciousness leaves one body and then goes straight into the next one however when he leaves that body it isn't just a hollow vessel it is instead it creates a entirely new consciousness within that vessel and these are known as the cast-offs so the game starts with you falling from the sky and crash landing onto the planet and essentially whatever happened is that the you were in the changing god and the changing god left you and then you've been created and your now goal is to find out who the hell you are who the changing god is, what the hell's been going on, and finding your way through this world. The basic gameplay of Tides of Numenera is actually very simple, and it's very much your traditional top-down isometric turn-based RPG. So you have your main character that you create at the start of the game, and then you have companions that you pick up along the way who all have their own separate stories and will interact with you depending on what your actions are. And then of course you have various character progression that is fairly in-depth and it goes to everything from new abilities to focuses to stat pulls. Now stat pulls are one of the most important mechanics of the game because they essentially represent everything that you can do in that game. Everything that from combat to conversations is affected by stat pulls and there are three main stat pulls, might, speed and intellect. And these stat pools are given a set value and you can, as you level up you can gain more stat pools in terms of increasing the amount of stats that they can hold. So for example, if you level up your intellect stat pool then you'll be able to hold you know, 15 intellect instead of something like 12. And the problem is with this is that this affects everything. And so what happens is that every time you try and use a speech skill such as deception for example and you have to use intellect for that if you want to improve your chances you have to use a certain amount of intellect points so you use four intellect points which takes down your stat pool and those stat pools can be replenished but they can only be replenished by either resting or using an item now it sounds good in principle but particularly at the start of the game, maybe the first five, six, seven hours, what you actually find is that this becomes very hard to manage very quickly. First, because resting to regain all those points costs a lot of money. And if you're like me and you go straight to the vendors and try and equip your character who literally starts with nothing, you're going to have no money to rest. Second is, of course, using items. Items are pretty rare to find at the very beginning. And then, of course, you have to go to the store to buy them and any item only restores three points or more at a time and it can leave you lacking when you are in need. So for example, there was one situation where I literally had to talk my way through a quest using intelligence, all my intelligence points for things like um, deception and persuasive techniques in the dialogue. And then I ended up doing combat, which actually left me with zero points for the combat itself. And you need the points for the 
Mortal Kombat 2 actually do kind of decent damage because if you don't have any points to add extra points to your attacks, you're going to really struggle. What makes the implementation of this system in the game? Because it is fine on paper, but the implementation is flawed. What makes it even more frustrating is the fact that oftentimes you will spend a lot of points to make sure that you are successful in any given dialogue situation for very little reward. You're talking literally 2 XP reward for trying to get some information out of someone. And now while that information might come in useful for another person or another part of the quest, sometimes it is completely irrelevant and it gets you very, very frustrated very quickly. This is compounded by the fact that this game is centered around story, which I love by the way. There is more dialogue and more talking here than any other element of the gameplay, which means when it comes down to combat, which is a pretty much a staple of the genre, it is something that is very few and far between. It is not like you'll be going out every single quest to go out and fight some enemies, and most of the time, even the dangerous encounters that can end up in combat, you can most of the time talk your way out of it, and usually that is the preferred method, because combat itself is so difficult, which later on in the game is a lot of fun. Early on in the game, it's a real problem with the balance of the combat difficulty, balanced with the fact of the limited amount of skill points that you actually have available to you. And it can actually end up with you not doing nearly enough damage, even if you are classed as the Warrior Glaive spec, which I was. And that in turn makes specking up any way other than a magic user who has a ton of intellect really difficult to really get into the game in any kind of fair way because the majority of the dialogue options are going to be centered around the use of intellect so if you spec up on something like might and you're focused on warrior the fact is there's no real reason for you to do that because a magic user can do more damage than a might user can at the very first half of the game at the very least and you'll be doing more talking and spending intellect points and so you really want to pretty much focus on that anyway so it makes the idea of having a warrior class in the first place almost pointless. That being said, I love that this game puts the story before its more action orientated sequences. This is a game where you're going to have to read a lot, you're going to have to pick up on dialogue, you're going to have to respond from the dialogue tree in a correct manner and basing on based upon the situation itself and the character you're choosing to because you don't want to push them too hard too fast or they will shut down and not give you what you want. The dialogue itself is well written. The story itself is well written however there are a couple of problems within there there are several story moments and several dialogue moments even within the first half of the game that really do create a sense of cognitive dissonance and they don't make a lot of sense to be quite honest there was a point where i can't really reveal what the situation was because it's a spoiler but let's just say there was a point where a character that i was talking to mentioned something that was directly relevant to one of the companions i was with with and it was directly relevant to me as well and it introduced a whole new dynamic except for the fact that the character next to me the companion character didn't react to all to it and then the whole thing pretended like it never was said and it never happened which may didn't make a lot of sense there's also the time whereby you die if you die in this game that death is not technically the end and you just get moved to somewhere else and then you come back to life now the problem with this is if i die in the middle of battle with two companions and then i'm suddenly resurrected because of my regeneration abilities and those two companions are right there with me especially the situation let's say that it was made to be it didn't make a lot of sense one, because I was in a facility that I was the only person who could get in and out of that facility. So it's not like anyone else could come and rescue me. But let's say for a moment that the two companions after I died, you know, pulled me out of there. Now, that is a reasonable explanation, except they wouldn't take me to the place that I found myself being revived in, especially what was going on. And those moments 
just really do take you out of the immersion of the game itself because they don't make a lot of sense whatsoever any way you look at it and the game and the story is filled with moments like that then that itself is a real shame however i have to say that torment tides of numenera is a fantastic game for us law nerds out there if you enjoy a good story with plenty of backstory with a really vibrant and vivid world that there's a lot of things going on there's lots of characters there's a ton of dialogue options and you put story over anything else this is definitely a game for you because trust me you'll be reading the dialogue for hours and hours and hours if you are looking for a more Pillars of Eternity style game that's, you know, it's a nice balance between lots of combat and lots of story, you're not really going to find it in Torment. There's not that much combat when you really look at the amount of time that you spend doing talking to various characters and exploring the various cities and the various world. There's not that much combat, and the combat itself can be inherently frustrating. I love the system and the mechanical system behind the design of the entire game. I like it in premise, but I just don't think that the implementation is quite up to where it should be, especially in terms of providing new players a fun and smooth experience when coming into the game. Yes, make it challenging, but don't make it frustrating, and that is the key there. The story is good for the most part, the dialogue is good for the most part, it has some great characters in there, it has some fantastic story reveals in there, and the entire premise of the game is really interesting. I loved the character progression, I thought that was really well done. The combat for me was severely lacking in several areas, but I thought the base turn-based system was solid, but it has specific problems in almost every area of the game. Not to mention that a lot of the stretch goals that were funded in the Kickstarter didn't actually get up being implemented in the game whatsoever. Now, there were a couple of reasons that I think specifically making the Bloom not the second major city. I think there's a lot of things that made sense for the good of the game, but the things like, you know, there was a stretch goal for a pet, that didn't even make it into the game. And that is a little bit shady when you have, you know, crowdfunded your game with a specific set of stretch goals that people wanted to pay for those stretch goals to get that thing in the game, and then you don't deliver that. That is a little bit of shady street. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the audio and the visuals. Now, the audio itself, I love the soundtrack of the game, and I love the voice acting, what little there was of it. But the sound effects side of things really disappointed me and became quite irritating because they use a lot of the sound effects over and over and over for the same thing, which really needed a lot of audio variety to really make that not an irritating thing by the end of the game, especially when you're 30, 40, 50 hours in. Now, the visual side of things, I have to say that I was mostly pleased with the visuals. I thought some of the backdrops looked amazing. I thought the world looked amazing. However, I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't more high resolution. I, in particular, the character models, you couldn't, a lot of them were very grainy and you couldn't really see any kind of detail on them. And that was a big disappointment for me. I understand going for a certain visual art style, but at the same time, you know, with a world that is fun, as fantastic as as Numenera, you really want to see and experience all the little details. And sadly, the developers with the Unity engine did not do that. Overall, Torment Tides of Numenera is a solid RPG outing. I think it has great world design, it has great story, and people looking for those things will definitely find it in spades here, and they will have a hell of a good time for 40, 50 plus hours. However, I think that it has a specific set of problems in almost every department of the game, and it has specific disappointments that I felt were too big to overlook, and thus for me, it remains a good game, but never reaches a great game status. And for that reason, I would say, unless you are dead set on grabbing this straight away and experiencing it full pace, 50 hours plus, then I would say you need to wait for a sale. Because unless you are a diehard fan of the franchise and what, you know, Planescape Torment was and everything like that, then it is probably worth picking it up on a sale you know, in six months time, playing it through then and getting real value for money out of that if you can overlook 
the several problems that the game has. Plus the fact that I hope that the developers will actually patch out a lot of the balance issues with the character progression and the combat to make the game a much more fluid and ultimately fun experience. And that is my review of Torment Tides of Numenera. Thank you so much for watching and listening. As always, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe and to share on social media, places like Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. And as always, I will see you next time.